We previously looked at integrating a function of two input variables over a rectangle. But what if instead of finding the volume under the graph, um, but cut at the bottom with the base of a rectangle, what if we wanted a different shape? So we could now talk about integrating f of x comma y over a more general shape in the plane. So I just tried to have down on the plane, um, in the input space, in the x and y axes, just some kind of just general shape. So don't read too much into this specific shape. I just wanted something that wasn't a rectangle here. And let's now just talk about um, if we take all the region that's all the points that are above this but under the graph of f, that should now form a new three-dimensional thing that we should try to get the volume of and we should talk about what that interval looks like. So if you have a new region D here with um, x going from a to b, a and b are constants, and y going between two functions of x, so g, g sub 1 of x uh, to g sub 2 of x, then the double integral over this new region D not a rectangle anymore, it doesn't have to be a rectangle anyway, is the integral from a to b, uh, that's what x goes from and to, right, uh, of the integral uh, from g sub 1 of x to g sub 2 of x, at least that's what y goes from and to, of f of x comma y. Um, note that, again, this, you know, the outer integral corresponds to the um, outer d whatever thing so so x uh, goes from a to b and those those are constants the the last integral needs to always have constants so just a picture of what this might look like um, is that just in the input dimensions um, x axis y axis you might have the region d might look like this so um, x starts at a x ends at b um, and we're looking at this region in pink that's in between these two regions and uh, be between these two curves in blue, right? So y equals g sub 1 of x, y equals g sub 2 of x, and we want all the region that's in between. So let's um, do this. Let's at least set up what's going on. So integrate f of x comma y equals x squared plus 2y over the region between uh, the parabola y equals x squared minus 1 and the parabola y equals negative x squared plus 7. So that just for the picture of these two parabolas it's shown and the region in between is shaded here in pink. Um, I won't go through the algebra but you could certainly get that the two inter th the two points of intersection of these two parabolas will have x coordinate either plus 2 or minus 2. Um, and so the, the region that we actually have here, apologies for the typo, this should be um, x going from negative 2 to positive 2, and y going between x squared minus 1 and negative x squared plus 7. Notice uh, the thing is, um, the x squared minus 1, this parabola this way, is the one that's underneath for this shaded region. Okay, so why isn't it the other way around, right? It's because for the x values between negative 2 and 2, um, the value of negative x squared plus 1 is actually the bigger value, right? It's bigger than x squared minus 1 is. So we'll set up an integral um, from negative uh, 2 to 2 of integral x squared minus 1 to negative x squared plus 7 of x squared plus 2y dy dx. Now let's evaluate this integral. Um, let's just go with this one here, right? So, uh... I, th I think we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's just kind of go through the, the the key ideas anyway. Is is that uh, we should evaluate the inner integral, thinking of y as being uh, the variable and thinking of x as constant. So if x is constant, to integrate x squared, that's going to be x squared y. Think about the integral of five; it'd be five y, right? So then, and then to integrate two y, that'll be y squared. And we should do this now that here's an antiderivative we need to plug in y is negative x squared plus 7 and we need to plug in y is x squared minus 1. So it gets a little messy when you do that but it should look like this so I tried to use some parentheses and square brackets to hopefully make it clear what's going on x squared and then y is replaced with um, negative x squared plus 7 which I wrote as 7 minus x squared plus uh, y squared so uh, plus um, quantity 7 minus x squared close parentheses squared that's all in square brackets, minus, and then same deal, just plug in uh, x squared minus 1 for y this time. Um, there's certainly more work to do at this point, right? Like a lot of foiling and distributing and collecting like terms and then integrating again. Um, we'll stop, uh, mainly because at this point, what's here, even if it's kind of messy and tedious, is truly a Calc 1 style integral. It even ends in a dx, doesn't it?